I remember my Uncle Lloyd when he was getting senile and we had to take him to the hospital and he <laughs> took off all his clothes one day in the hospital and ran out to the parking lot. And in the parking lot, he was searching for his car that he hadn't had for forever and a day, uh, like 15 years or whatever. Anyway, they managed to get this naked old man back into the hospital and, uh, you know, calm him down, settle him down, help him figure out where the heck he was and so forth. But he was definitely having a senior moment. And right now, you know, without naming any names and so forth, there's some political situations where people are having a lot of senior moments. But as we'll discover, senior moments are not just for senior citizens. They're for anybody. You can have them at any age. And uh, there can be other problems going on that seem like senior moments that actually aren't. So, for example, I'm having a lot of problems with my mouth right now. And uh, I was recording a special episode of the podcast that's going to come out tomorrow for dealing with memory situations about how to like remember not to touch your face, uh, which is good advice right now. And um, with these problems with my mouth, I was, you know, stumbling over myself. They weren't senior moments, but they certainly appeared to be. And so I said, oh, I'm not going to re-record that because, you know, we want to um, sort of <laughs> make sure that this is uh, what it is. And it's this problem, not another problem. And, you know, you just keep going with things. But Definitely stay tuned for that episode. If you're not subscribed to the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, please do so you don't miss this uh, very, very special episode about how to remember not to touch your face. Um, now, uh, I, I want to say hello to Daniel. Aloha, Daniel. Hello, Crone Woman Walking. And you say you're glad that you're on now, and I'm glad you're on now. Thanks for being here. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and how things are with your mind. Like, do you have these things where you mix up your words or forget where people are and so on. We're going to dig into this a little bit here. But first, I want to thank our first memory uh, members, our memory apprentice in Jessup, <laughs> INCJSP, and also George Lauder. I don't, I didn't get a screenshot for him because I haven't been able to find it, but we have our first two supporters of the membership uh, here. And if you want to become one, here's a very awkward look on my face uh, where you can just click join and see the options that you have there. Really appreciate all the support to help this grow. I wanna be able to hire a second editor for this channel. So every penny counts to that end. You just click this join thing. There's some information about what all that means. And again, thank our first members there, INC, JSP, and George Lauder was the other one that I saw. I really appreciate that. Now, in terms of um, things like this, we're also, you know, about to launch a very detailed study of this, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, in order to do more detailed studies of things that will help you use the memory tradition better, then obviously the more support we have is the better. So thank you again to all those people. So what are senior moments? Well, they can be sudden lapses in your thinking where well, I don't even know what I was trying to say. It can be what's called presque vu. Uh, if you're using memory techniques, you can, for example, you can uh, have ghosting, it's called. I just had a sudden lapse there because I see Chrome Woman Walking has joined as a channel member. Uh, welcome to Memory Adept, Crone Woman Walking. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. I don't know why it doesn't show up on our uh, little uh, chat wheel there, but I really appreciate that. So you could have sudden lapses like that, and we'll talk about that in a minute because it's not necessarily a senior moment, but you know when something new enters your field, it can distract you temporarily, and uh, especially when it's a joyous thing. Uh, so thank you so much for your support, Crone Woman Walking. Great to have you as a channel member. And... Um, so those, there's those kinds of lapses. There's also misattributions. So this is something that happens quite a bit where you go, oh, that song, that was by, I don't know, Richard Marx or something like this. And you're so certain that this song is by Richard Marx that you then don't even know that you've misattributed it. Uh, this can happen a lot. And even today, I was just at... Uh, at the cafe and I saw one of my wife's supervisors in her PhD just to protect the innocent. I won't say the name, but I, the, the two supervisors, their names are so close together. I said her name correctly, but I was like worried. Oh, well, is, is it just, just to make up another set of names that are similar? It's as close as Anne and Annie, right? That sort of closeness. And so 
I called her Anne and it turned out to be correct. But the whole time I was like, I hope I didn't misattribute it because it was so close. But you could also just have this in everyday life with lots of things. It can also be not just names of people, but it can be dates of things where you're sure it's 1977, but actually, you know, it's 1985 or whatever. And I have this a lot with people when we talk about movies and so forth. They're so certain that they've attributed the right date to something, but they're quite off. And that can be considered a senior moment. And then there's difficulty tracking the environment. So just as happened, Cronin and Walking very graciously supported our project here with uh, becoming a channel member. And uh, again, thank you for that. And it just sort of becomes a, a thing where the environment has suddenly thrown something at you. And we saw with a certain politician saying, uh, you know, turning and saying, here's my wife when it was his sister. And he's just not tracking where the movements or whatever that that may or may not be a senior moment but the brain is somehow having difficulties there and one of the uh, one of the things that we see happening a lot is called i call it the scissor problem dslr dave is in the house good to see you dave thanks for being here i owe you an email and thanks for the thumbnail you sent across it looks great i just haven't had a chance to put up the the next one dave does uh some amazing work for some great channels and has a cool channel as well. If you're learning French, which I know Chrome and Walking is, Chrome and Walking, you've got to follow DSLR Dave's channel. It's it's Quebec French, but he speaks so amazing. I just love listening to it. And I understand uh, enough to, to follow some of the advice there and uh, really excited to be working with him. So thanks for being here today. So what is the scissor problem? Well, you know, when you leave your office, like this office, I don't have any scissors in here, which is kind of stupid, but I should have scissors in here, but I don't because we keep them in the kitchen, the central location where everybody can find them, which maybe is very wise. But you know, you might get to the kitchen and you say, what did I come here for? And this can happen again at any age. And there's some exercises that we can do. So one of the best ways to solve the scissor problem is first to understand why it happens. And it's similar to tracking the environment problems. So for example, when you leave this room, if you're in this room and you're going for scissors, you open the door, the air quality changes, the temperature changes, the ambient sounds of the environment changes, and your brain has to compensate for all of this. And when your brain suddenly is compensating for all this new stimulation, the idea of scissors can be gone, right? So how do you compensate for this? Well, one simple thing you can do, this is a bonus exercise, is just clamp your fist, hold your fist, and say scissors as you walk through the door. And that will hold your attention on the intended outcome of you leaving that room in the first place. And you can just hold that all the way till you get the scissors. And then you get back to your original thing and you cut whatever it is you needed to cut with those scissors. It doesn't have to be scissors. It could be whatever you're going for. Pen, uh, anything, right? Uh, cell phone, MP3 player, whatever it is, this is a very, very powerful thing. It also applies to something that we'll talk about later when you're having a conversation. So you know when you're having a conversation and you're like, ooh, ooh, I've got a point, I've got a point, but I don't want to interrupt. Well, what you can do is just hold your fist and imagine you're holding the keyword of the point that you want to speak about. But we'll get to that a little bit later. But anyway, it relates to all these things. And it can happen at any age, any age whatsoever. So let's get into our first exercise. If you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking, and um, what's going on with you. Exercise number one has an origin from a very, very reputable source named Dr. Gary Small. And I found it in Two Weeks to a Younger Brain. I've interviewed Dr. Small on the Magnetic Murray Method podcast. He's an amazing, amazing guy. And you want to read this book. And it's a very scientifically tested brain exercise that helps a lot of people with their memory. And it's called the four details exercise. And what's so beautiful about it is that it promotes mental organization. It makes observation procedural, and it's very useful in many areas of life, such as conversations, awareness, etc. So what is the four details exercise? Well, it's just this simple. You notice four details about people in your environment that you see. So I mentioned I saw one of my wife's supervisors today, just simple noticing something about the hair, something about the clothes, something about the jewelry, and something about the shoes. Bang, 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 bang. And then if you make it 
a memory exercise, you could use mnemonics to encode all those details to recall later. But the way Gary Small talks about it, you just passively, it's called passive memory exercise. You just ask yourself later in the day, what were those four details? It's a very, very super simple thing. And this can sharpen your life in many, many ways, sharpen your mind in incredible ways because it's mental organization. And the way that I do it is I always proceed from the head down to the feet, but you could proceed the other way. But to promote mental organization, the point is, is to do it in a mentally organized way. So not, well, from, you know, something around the, the middle of the body and then up to the head, then down to the feet and then to the wrists, right? That's just all over the place. But if you always do it the same way, and obviously you can experiment with different ways and change it up from time to time, which is a good use of neurobics, but more or less to practice the promotion of mental organization, top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever it is, be very, very structured. And what does it mean to make observation procedural? Well, it means that when you train yourself to do these things and you do them again and again and again, it gets into your procedural memory and then you just start doing it on autopilot. And this is in and of itself a good thing for your brain when you have these little things that you just happen to do. And again, it's useful in many areas of life. So for conversations, for example, oh, I noticed that you have this very nice uh, br bracelet. Where did you get that? Then you have, you always have something to talk about because you've just trained yourself to observe things about people. Very, very powerful. Also awareness. I'll never forget. There was this rogue, unpleasant human being outside of our building one day. And I thought, this is not good. Call the police. And <laughs> the people we were with, uh, Ollie Richards was here from IWillTeachYouALanguage.com visiting. He's just like, how did you remember all that stuff about this guy? Because I was talking about the hair color. The guy had a widow's peak, the exact color of his shirt, what kind of shoes he had on, the pants that he had on, the kind of the brand of the cigarettes he was carrying, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, it's just because of this, right? It's just I'm trained to notice, observe, to observe these things about people. I've trained myself. It's in my, it's in my procedural memory. So I would highly recommend that you do this, and then it's going to have so many very, very good knock-on effects, positive effects, because you'll be able to describe things in an emergency a lot better, right? So give that a try. It's a very powerful exercise. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And I got another exercise for you. Exercise number two. Ooh, that reminds me. Here's a little bonus exercise for you. Bleak Sand is in the house. Good to see you. Bleak Sand, thanks for being here. Thanks for saying hello. Um, I learned this from Anastasia Woolmer. She is an Australian memory champion. And so if you haven't heard her on the podcast, she was on recently on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. She talked about doing this on the podcast and I was doing it while that we were talking. <laughs> and it's very challenging, actually. So you make a peace sign with one hand and an OK sign with another hand, and then you switch. And I've gotten a lot better at it since that I first heard it. I don't know if I can do it while I'm <laughs> doing a live stream, but um, you just practice switching. It's very, very cool. And it gets your body involved. And there's other ones. So when she told me that, I realized that I knew another one that I used to do, which is, you know, going from um, live long and prosper to this. So you switch like this and you switch like that and you go like this and then like this. And then you can make it challenging to yourself by going like this. And again, I don't know if I can do this when I'm talking, but you go like this and then you would switch to that, right? And just go back and forth switching. And you can come up with different patterns. Very, very important. And um, Chrome of Walking is saying, 9-11 is usually impressed when I remember license plate numbers. Uh, I impress the state trooper by remembering my license number. Amazing, amazing. Well, Chrome of Walking, you are more than a memory adept. You are a master. So that's wonderful. And yeah, license plates is another thing that you can practice. Even if you don't have memory skills yet, which I hope that you do, uh, you can just start practicing memorizing them, getting used to using your memory in this way. And then if you do have memory skills, then you can rapidly encode both letters and numbers, whatever appears there. Uh, I saw a really good one the other day. Uh, I, I, I think it's against the law to actually mention other people's memory pal or sorry, license plates. So I won't mention this one. I, it might be against the law to memorize, to mention other people's memory palaces too. There, I'm having a senior moment, right? It can happen at any age. But uh, the point is, is that 
I'm not going to say what this license plate was. I've seen some real good ones. I, and the, the, the memory I have of where I got this idea that it's illegal to share other people's license plates is because we were in Germany on tour with my band, The Outside. And I think we were on our way to uh, Lübeck, which I believe is the hometown of um, Thomas Mann, where we played a, a, a concert at, I think it was called Dr. Rock or something like this. And in any case, I remember outside of the hall there in Lubick, there was a poster for another band called Nasty Jeans. See, I'm doing memory exercise right now as I do this. Anyway, we had seen a license plate and it was a very political message on that license plate. And I took a photograph of it, which I still sure I have. And Roland, who is the singer of The Outside, he said, whatever you do, do not post that anywhere because not only can you be in trouble for that, but we can all be in trouble because we were with you. So don't post that license plate. Anyway, it's a very funny license plate, very politically charged, especially in Germany. All right, thanks again, Chrome and Walking, for that wonderful, uh, uh, well, that's more than super chatting. That's becoming a channel member, but also for your, you know, exercise there and how you're using it in your everyday life with, um, uh, you know, dealing with state troopers and, and in your work where I imagine you would have uh, many opportunities to do that. Anna is here uh, from Slovenia. Oh, well, I believe one of my favorite philosophers is from Slovenia, actually. Isn't uh, Slavoj Žižek from that country? Thanks for being with us uh, on Facebook. Thanks for joining us wherever you may be. And um, yeah, so those are some additional things just to throw them in. Get your hands involved. Uh, I mentioned what we learned from Anastasia Wolmer on the uh, last podcast, which is to turn from the OK sign. Ooh, that's really challenging, especially when you're talking. But that, and then there's the Star Trek exercise where you can go like that from hand to hand. I'm not doing it very well as I'm speaking, but it's very challenging, very good brain exercise. Uh, and another one that I just uh, will throw in very briefly here is to do something like uh, Kirtan Kriya, it's called. So you go Sata Nama, Sata Nama. Pretty easy, right? Not very challenging. But you can go Sa Na Ta Ma, right? You can skip as you go through it. Wow. Mind blown. Cuomo Walking says, actually, another thing that happened after buying your memory supercharger, I remembered a telephone number under stress. Amazing. Wow, that's great. Uh, I mean, so many cool things can happen when you really train your memory. You'll be, you'll be amazed by how much stuff you start to remember, how many things, the more you relax yourself, the more that you become one with the screen, so to speak, which when we do the Art of Memory first video, I'm going to explain more about what that means to become the screen. Uh, the video is shot. Ali has all the uh, instructions there for editing it. When you be, when you be the ocean, as Nietzsche said, when you can become that ocean, then so many amazing things happen with your mind. And great to hear that you memorized this telephone number or re recalled the telephone number under stress. Wonderful. Good to hear. Thank you for letting us know. All right. So alphabet skipping, what is this? Well, it, first of all, what it does for you is it gives you on and off blasts of concentration, which we know is very, very useful in order to help us focus, to give us more brain exercise that doesn't have um, negative effects necessarily because you're wearing yourself out, but it just gives you these short blasts of energy. And also it lets you work with the fundamental organizational structures of language and thought. And a lot of people, they you know say, what is this with this fascination with the alphabet? Well, it's not that I go out of my way to be fascinated with the alphabet. It's that it is what the art of memory is. And so, you know, you need to understand this. A lot of people that just, they, they, they kind of overthink it, but I also need to teach it better, I guess. But I always just sort of assumed that people would just follow the directions without a whole bunch of explanation about the how and the why of it. But the alphabet is actually not as mystical as the ancients thought, but the reason they gave it so much mystical force and power is because it was doing miraculous things for their memory. And they, they, they thought it's called the gematria, which is the idea that numbers and alphabetical symbols are somehow related, numbers and the alphabet are related, but that they're related specifically to the solar system and that you could draw this into yourself and somehow to be closer to God. Um, that's obviously problematic because there has to be a God in order for you to be closer to one. Uh, and when you get more into the art of memory and you understand that it, it, its implications are a little bit more powerful than, than any of that, this is very, very 
wonderful what happens to you. But <laughs> let's just pull back a little bit and work with the brain exercises first, because what we really want to do is challenge mental dexterity. So how does this work? Well, one of the things that it, that it does is it allows you to focus on a structured organizational element, a tool that you're already familiar with, and then challenge yourself with it. So the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. That in itself is actually a very good brain exercise. When was the last time you said the alphabet, right? Now, skipping is A, C, E, G, I, right? And you just say every other letter. And then as you go backwards, you say the letters that you didn't say the first time. This is brain exercise that is very, very challenging. You might want to start by actually memorizing the alphabet backwards. So I think it's Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Uh, sometimes I make a I, H misattribution there. There's a link for you in the description where you see me juggling and uh, reciting the alphabet backwards. This is very challenging. <laughs> And you might make a mistake once in a while when you do that kind of stuff. But that's another skill that you can do. So you could juggle and go A, C, E, and so on. But just just try it. And to get started very simply, write it down. You don't have to do it verbally at first. But the more you do it verbally, the more you're going to practice. And it's just a beautiful thing to do mentally. And you can also uh, skip around the alphabet in different ways. So you can go A, Z, B, Y, C, X, D, W, etc. You can use mnemonics as well to help you. So if I'm correct that it's D and W are matched when you skip that way, uh, you could just use like WD-40 as an image to help you remember that, which gives you yet another brain exercise, which is the application of these memory skills. So how do you like that? Alphabet skipping. Very, very powerful. Oh, another thing you could do is mix and match with Kirtan Kriya. So instead of going Sata Nama, Sata Nama, you could do like A, C, E, G, and so forth, and skip it that way, and have something to be an additional level of concentration to give your body something to do. Mmm, that feels good. So give that a try. All right, if you're joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And I want to talk a little bit more about this Art of Memory project. Please stay tuned. It's going to be a whole series. I'm planning, if there's enough interest and support, to go through the entire book chapter by chapter and point out things that I don't think most people will notice. And I don't think Frances Yates herself noticed them. Because as she says in this book, very curiously, she never used the techniques herself. And that's a bit of a problem because so many people base so much of their practice on this book from somebody who didn't use the techniques. We've got to work on this. Get some more tools in our Batman tool belt. All right. So also, Michael Swain is going to be doing some videos for our channel. So stay tuned for when you see this face. I hope you'll support them getting close to being done. It's a massive project. And another update for you all, if you're not part of the Magnetic Mary Method Street team yet, for the new book that I'm putting out, please do. It's got a lot of heavy lifting brain exercise in it, some of the heaviest that you'll ever encounter, to be sure. And um, so far, if you're part of the street team, you have a walkthrough of how I built a memory palace out of the audiobook studio. And you have uh, a number of elements. And later this week, I hope I will have the time to put in the first audio sample of the audiobook. So check that out. I really appreciate everybody who's getting behind the launch of the new book. You also get the title reveal and the cover reveal. So <laughs> I say here, access the first reveal, but actually there's three reveals already for you. So if you haven't signed up for that, please do so in order to really, you know, get a lot of great stuff if you're interested in improving your memory and some next level memory exercises and brain exercises, because this stuff will really challenge your mind. One of the things that I really like about the brain exercise world is that, you know, sometimes people say, well, I just want easy street. Where's the easy button and all that sort of stuff. And I'm not really all that interested in easy because it's not particularly good for challenging your brain. We want to stretch. And so it's a neat thing to be able to actually say, hey, look, this is hard. Brain exercises, you want it as hard as it possibly can be. You want it as challenging as it can possibly be. And, you know, as a little bit of a question of the day, a little exercise for you, ask yourself, what's the hardest part about being you? Where can we get this? You know, and how has that made you a stronger person? Embrace hard things. 
life life has some challenges. The more that you have the ability to embrace the hard things, the more you're going to be able to proceed in life. So don't look for easy street all the time. Look for things that challenge you. But the trick is, is to make sure that you're not getting frustrated. Whenever you get frustrated, pull back from frustration and then just keep yourself challenged. Keep yourself in that sweet spot where you're growing because of the challenge. All right, so exercise number three is repetition. And basically, this is something that has helped me a lot because I can be quite scatterbrained, unfortunately, and I can you know, sometimes just mind wander all over the place. But what I love to do is just when I find myself wandering and just as a general practice is repeat what people are saying in my own mind as they're saying it. And this is something that can be a bit weird at the beginning. You'll think, well, how am I going to concentrate? And the, you'll learn quite quickly that actually you, you hardly were concentrating at all in the first place. So you've got to really work this. You've got to make sure that you're going to try it, try it for an extended period of time. And you don't have to do it just in conversations. You can also do it when you're listening to podcasts, when you're watching videos and one little tip for you is to time it and take breaks. So throw on a podcast, set the timer for a minute, and just sit there and repeat everything that's being said on the podcast. So if it's the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, you're just repeating in your mind, hey, this is Anthony Metivier, you're listening to the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. And you're going, hey, this is Anthony Metivier, you're listening to the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. I know that can be a little bit boring, but just try it. Whatever it is, whatever you're listening to, just start to practice for about a minute or less, whatever you think you can do, do a little bit less than you think you can do, which is a tip from Tim Ferriss, who's a top performer. And um, take breaks and then start again. So do, let's say, just to keep it clean, one minute on, two minutes off, then do another minute. Just set the timer and practice following conversations and repeating them. Reclaiming Life is in the house. Good to see you, Reclaiming Life. You say hi when you just log on. Easy Street is the boring way. Challenge makes things fun. That's why people enjoy puzzles. That's great. Uh, yeah, puzzles, and I'm very, very excited about it. But the problem is, is there's research into crossword puzzles. And the reality is, is that a lot of people cheat on them. A lot of people give up very, very quickly when they, it, it actually is de-skilling the skill that they want to have. So you're right, it's why people enjoy puzzles. But when we, we, we see an 80-20 distribution, right, where a lot of people who love puzzles are actually being de-skilled by the very thing that they're skilling, which is why the brain exercises that I focus on, they don't have external devices except for maybe paper where you would write yourself whatever it is like alphabet skipping you could use writing to assist you in the beginning but you want to get to the point where you're not having it on paper as soon as possible and that helps you avoid de-skilling and it helps you avoid being distracted and oh i'm doing a crossword puzzle here well i can just um you know skip ahead to the parts and only fill in the parts that i already know without doing any work or whatever anyway i don't know how sound that research is, but if you look at the crossword puzzle episode on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast, you can see some of that research, and it seems very, very true. Just, just, just around across the board, the way that people talk about puzzles and so forth. So, reclaiming life says, I'm not talking about crossword puzzles. I'm talking about jigsaw puzzles, which have helped me so much with my ADD enough that I built my focus so much that I no longer need medicine. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. So that's interesting. What um, what level of challenge do you typically do with crossword puzzles? I'd love to know more about that. Uh, I love puzzles too. I love jigsaw puzzles. They're, they're, they're great. And in that context, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's good. We need to be more specific. But, you know, I think you, you, know, you know what I mean, especially with brain game apps and so forth, where the agenda is usually to show you more advertising and also to hook you onto programs that actually aren't serving you because they're not really challenging you. Or if they are challenging you, those challenges aren't related to anything in life. And it's not actually clear that the research that they're saying indexes onto real life things. And one of the things that horrifies me, and I've recently been doing some research on this uh, with in, in, in collaboration with a writer, he uh, and I, we found, we looked at a lot of these softwares and the re scientific research that they're showing, and it's really strange how, yeah, okay, so you've got university of whatever research, but the research they're showing, they just know that people aren't going to do their due diligence. So they just throw research that has 
very little to do with their claims. And that's uh, frightening, actually, because let's just face it, a lot of people are gullible and they'll go, oh, scientific research, wow, look at that. And then, um, you know, they're, they're convinced because at least there's some research there, but they don't really look at the research and they don't go, huh, <laughs> what does 90-year-olds with, um, you know, uh, schizophrenia have to do with me? Yeah, sure. So there's some research here that shows that the 90-year-olds with schizophrenia have uh, benefited from 10 minutes with uh, some bizarre software that is not the software that this company is selling. But, uh, well, uh, no, no, it's not okay. It doesn't make any sense. The pieces don't fit, to use the, pe the puzzle metaphor. <laughs> it's actually very, very bankrupt and scary that they get away with that. And of course, some companies don't get away with it because we know there was a massive lawsuit not too many years ago uh, to help you know, clean out some of those bad activities, but it hasn't been cleaned out enough because we just saw a whole bunch of equally morally disgusting claims out there and uses of the research. Anyway, enough whinging. Let's talk about repetition a little bit more. One of the things you can do to challenge yourself is you're listening to something, you're repeating it in your head, and then you write out from memory what it is that you remembered, right? Now, in the beginning, just start with keywords. Don't try to memorize it verbatim, although you can work to memorize it verbatim. And if that's desired, one of the things that will help you is that Lucas Van Viva was his name. He wrote a post on magneticmerrymethod.com for conference interpreters. So you could search up conference interpreting and read what Lucas Van Viva has to say there. And it's absolutely incredible what conference interpreters can do with their memory. Now, Obviously, they're not going to be doing it word perfect 15 minutes after, but in the immediate, it's um, quite extraordinary. So you could look into that world. Uh, Reclaiming Life says, I started at 300 piece puzzles, then 500, and only allowing myself to focus on them, just classical music playing in the background, till I finished them in one sitting, forcing myself to focus. Now I'm doing larger ones with better focus, even if it's not in one sitting. Oh, that's amazing. Excellent. So there's some good uh, tips for you if you want to get into that. People can start, pick a number, a relatively small number, and then scale over time to larger and larger numbers. And that, you know, heuristic of can I do this in one sitting is a very good one. And you could choose something like classical music. I don't know if you have any, any particular um, suggestions of what classical music might work best. I'd probably go for um, Shostakovich or so, <laughs> Eighth Symphony, because <laughs> it's quite robust. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what the exact music would matter. And you could split test it between music and maybe a podcast or something like that. Uh, try and think of what your goals would be, what outcome that you would want and enable yourself to test it over time and then make it more and more challenging. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very much a, a, a lover of puzzles and I want to get some super big ones in the near future. We we're just waiting a little bit to have a home, which is not clear to us <laughs> what that's going to be. But that's a story for a different day and its own brain exercise, to be sure. All right. So basically what we're after, though, is just some basic brain exercise today. I wanted to give you three simple tips, three simple ideas. I wound up giving you, giving you five, and now we've got six with Reclaiming Life, maybe even more than that. Uh, I think actually we we're up to seven or eight now. I haven't been counting as we went along, but that's another thing that you can do as a brain exercise challenge is count things as you go along. If you really want to get into this, you can start using the major system, for example, at the grocery store and just start calculating the prices, memorizing the prices and doing some calculation as you go along. The point is, though, just for some basic light brain exercise that will help to eliminate these senior moments and give you some some skills to not be frustrated when they do happen because they can still happen. And I will tell you that in my view, if you don't get frustrated when they happen with yourself or with others, then you have eliminated senior moments. Okay. So it doesn't mean eliminate doesn't necessarily mean disappear entirely. The world is what it is learning how to accept it, both when you make it issues in it and when others make issues in it, that is the elimination of problems, right? Radical acceptance of the world, as it is. So I feel quite confident in using the word eliminate for that reason. 
it is um, that simple. So how are you going to get there? How are you going to help yourself? Well, four times a week minimum. Please practice. Please, at least. And this isn't a number that I pulled out of the air. This is shown in the research again and again and again that there needs to be a certain minimum amount of exposure and it seems to be about four times a week minimum. Now, you have to do some analysis in yourself, in your personality, but some people say that there also needs to be some touch with a community. I'm not, sh I'm not sure really to what extent that, that helps all people, but we certainly have a community and things are a little bit uh, asynchronous and not exactly what they were last year at the moment due to certain technological changes. But Reclaiming Life, I saw that our service that we use has, after the death of Andy Jenkins, who created it, has equivocated, has come back, and that's very good. So we may be able to launch that again, but we have other challenges, which is that I'm having problems with my mouth and my voice and so forth. So uh, this live stream is gonna be a bit shorter than usual, and that might not be able to go the way that it goes, but we're gonna get that back to uh, hopefully once a month. Um, and so the point being, You've got to do four times a week minimum, and you may want some community interaction to help fortify what it is you're doing four times a week, some sort of discussion. And we're building that community here. So thank you again to Chrome Woman Walking and you know everybody who's supporting this project, INC, JSP, and George Lauder, who have become channel members. And so if anybody wants to join them, that is fantastic. KI is here. Kai, I love your content. Probably buy your premium content when I make money. Very appealing to me. Thank you, Kai. Thank you so much for being here. I'm not sure how you say that. Key or Kai or KI, but beautiful, beautiful set of letters there. I love them. Those who know your Ars Combinatoria, you've got brain exercise right there in front of you, uh, as with all words, as with all names. So thank you very much for your interest and uh, if you want to get the masterclass, then that's there for you. Also, there's more brain exercises in the link repository below this video. There's a bunch for you in writing. And there's also a video on YouTube. And the link is there for you with me up on the roof of this building, giving you a couple that we haven't covered today, brain exercises that will improve your memory. So look for that. Link is down below. Watch these things. Please share them around. That really helps this project grow as it becomes what it is becoming. And um, yeah, I just want to thank again, uh, INC JSP, which is again for you, Ars Combinatoria people, a wonderful exercise. If you want to join the channel, it's just as simple as clicking that join button underneath any video. I will remind you again that very soon, as soon as possible, it's in production right now, The Art of Memory video one of a series where I'm hoping to go through the entire book, but we need to test that you're all interested. So when you see it come out, make sure I know loud and clear that you're interested. This is going to be a challenging video, though, because we're not dumbing it down. All right. And the, the Magnetic Mary Method Project has never been for entry level stuff anyway. There's a lot of entry level memory training out there, but we need, you know, we need to also something more robust. We need a destination after that. Now, we have a lot of people who treat it the magnetic memory method as entry level and they do just fine. So don't get scared away. But at the same time, we're part of the tradition. We're part of how that it was done thousands of years ago, keeping that alive and taking the context of the great memory competitors and what they've learned as part of what we're doing. But those guys, they tend to forget whatever it is that they memorized after the competition. Now, Jonas von Essen is the name, I believe. He's a memory competitor, and he just did something with Pi, the Pi matrix. And so, obviously, he memorized Pi for a much longer time to be able to sit there. And basically, what they do is they have a big old fat book with, I think it was 100,000 digits, if memory serves. And they have the 100,000 digits in this book. And then what they do is they just have pre-selected a number of pages from the pi matrix of 100,000 digits, and they go to say page 72, line 14 or whatever it is there. I don't think there are 14 lines on any of these pages, but then they read one line, and then Jonas has to do, he has to recite the line 
prior to that line and the line after that line. I think that's how it works. I only watched a little bit of it, but they were live streaming it. I don't know what the results were. I don't know if he did all 100,000 digits in the, in this book. You don't, I, I don't believe they recite all 100,000 digits, but they just test throughout in a way that makes it quite clear that this uh, has been accomplished. Because how would you how would you be able to do that? How would you be able to go through all of those selections if you didn't have the whole? Uh, so I, I'm quite confident in their abilities to, without having to listen to 100,000 digits um, recited, to verify that those 100,000 digits are there. Anyway, that's, that is an exception to how the competitions can have long form, long uh, recall, recall of these things. But normally these memory competitions, they're memorizing stuff and then they are um, forgetting it afterwards because they, they've accomplished it. There's nothing wrong with this. But it's it's different than the tradition, which is, can you, after memorizing something, recite it later? Like, for example, one of the things we talked about with Anastasia Woolmer that I never thought about when I was doing it, but when I went to do my TEDx presentation, it never occurred to me ever that that speech that I memorized for that purpose, I could give elsewhere. <laughs> it didn't have to be for that one time. And so she was talking about how she has a number of speeches that she can just throw down because of the memorization. So that's a slightly different approach than pie or, you know, playing cards to establish a, a Guinness record or just to win on a particular day in a memory competition. All of which is to say that this first video in the series on the art of memory, and I hope there'll be enough interest and support to go all the way through the book, chapter by chapter, is um, getting the best of all worlds. But I'm not going to skip things because Bruno, Giordano Bruno, it's very, I feel that it's very clear to me the mistakes that Yates made about what he was doing with the memory techniques and what he was doing in general with what is called pantheism. I think it's very clear to me how to understand this a lot better, to bring in the competition techniques and standards and to talk about what is essentially the implications of what Bruno was talking about, knowing now what we know and knowing that we're probably not going to face serious repercussions by using these techniques in that way. And what those repercussions are is not just to eliminate senior moments, but to be free. To be free in that sense of just enjoying the ride and just allowing the world to be what it is. And as Bruno put it, to be a competent individual capable of acting in the world, acting in the right way at the right time when you are called upon to act and not having a bunch of mental junk going on. And he, he says it loud and clear, but the problem is, is that it's not loud and clear here. And so together we can make it so, and it's very, I try to make it as clear as possible that it's about us together. So I hope that you'll enjoy it. Again, Michael Swain is going to be releasing some videos on this channel, and I hope that you'll watch out for them, support them. And um, if you're not part of the Magnetic Mary Method street team yet, for the launch of the new book. It's getting closer and closer and closer. There's still a lot of moving parts to deal with, but if you have been part of the support team, you already have a number of reveals. You have the cover reveal there. You have the title reveal. You have a walkthrough of the Memory Palace where we recorded the audiobook later this week. I'll hopefully, if there's time, be adding the first sample from the audiobook so you can listen to it in advance as part of the Magnetic Memory Method street team. So go and check that out. Let me get into the comments here. If you're joining us now, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. And please uh, leave any questions that you have now. I have a doctor's appointment, so I'm going to be getting out of here very soon. But now is your chance to ask any questions as I go through these comments here. So Reclaiming Life said he's doing larger ones now with better focus, even if it's not one sitting. So that's where we left off. Kai says, I love your content. Oh, yeah, we got that one. Sorry. Kai is saying to Reclaiming Life, I had a senior moment there. Sorry, my friends. <laughs> Kai says, it's an uh, uh, it's an investment that's very worth it. Do what you can to save the money for the masterclass. Then you, when you've gone through the masterclass, keep focusing on the material in podcasts and streams. That's great advice. These things are meant to work together. It's not one or the other, but it's both, ideally, for those who want the highest possible uh, benefits. And yeah, I mean, we have this weird and interesting and wonderful moment in internet history, in knowledge history, where we can have 
things like what we're doing right now, which is to make a new kind of university, a university that is extraordinarily inclusive. And I happen to have been a film professor uh, back in the day with a PhD with all kinds of studies and this, that, and the other thing, language, history of science, history of technology, and media, etc. And so a lot of what I'm doing is just taking those ideals of the university, the ideals of those things that I studied, and weaving them all together into the tools that we have right now to make what we're making right now. And the fact of the matter is, is every day that goes by that you don't have the sharpest possible memory, you are leaving so much of the fruits of your potential on the table, and you don't get time back. So we're here to save you time, and the masterclass is the way to do that, to really get these skills down pat very quickly. If it takes most people a couple of weekends at most, once you have the training, you're looking at two to five hours of setup and practice, and then boom, you have memory skills that will serve you for life. They get better and better and better, as Reclaiming Life says, the more that you use them and continue to index things together with the podcast, with the live streams, with the blog posts. And as you may notice, I have many guests on and so you get to learn from other memory competitors and you, you know, Anastasia Wilmer on the podcast recently, just before I went to do my TED talk, she's essentially, I'm asking her questions thinking, oh, what can I learn from my own TEDx presentation? And I learned a lot. I actually wound up rewriting the, re rewriting the thing <laughs> and uh, doing a much better one. So that was great. And memorizing it very quickly. So that's going to be a, an update coming soon to the masterclass. In any case... Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Kai says, how much is the masterclass? Might be able to join if the paycheck is enough. Let me know by email if you have any questions or just go to magneticmarymethod.com. Scroll down to the bottom. Information is there for you. Um, you're typing with your index finger because your thumb is damaged. Well, I hope that heals for you soon, Kai. And you say mental sharpness is something you've always wanted. It is yours on demand. So, again, check out magneticmarymethod.com and you know submit any questions that you have, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, next time I do a round of email. And mental sharpness is indeed the thing that one wants because it helps you absolutely, absolutely focus on the present moment and love it. <laughs> and love everything in it. Because what else do you have except for this screen in front of you and everything in it, right? Is there really anything else? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so Kai says all he's been doing is the dual end back. And yeah, so that's not exact. I mean, I don't know what the benefit or the lack of benefit might be there for you, but this is not really what we're talking about. What we're talking about is being able to structure your mind in such a way that you can remember whatever it is that you want and that you're actually selecting things that you really truly do want that are going to get you ahead in life right? So we use our memory for very, very specific outcomes. And we do that in order to maximize our potential. So we avoid what I call the Faust problem, which is selling your soul to have it all, when that's just going to lead you to eternal damnation of never having had what you really wanted, right? And if you know Christopher Marlowe's Faust, it's, I think it's more to the point than Goethe's Faust, but they're both good. It's better is to know them both, right? <laughs> but not in a way that gives you the Faust problem. Uh, but if you can read Faust in German by Goethe, that's even better. But the whole point is, is so many people, they won't focus on just the biggest levers. But if I can get you to do that and have a learning project, a memory project that is focused on the thing that's going to get you the furthest, the farthest ahead, you truly will enjoy what you have and you won't need it all anymore. You won't have what the Germans call Sehnsucht, the longing after being, right? The longing after these things. You'll be so satisfied. And that ultimately is what Bruno was after in The Art of Memory. And this is sort of something that Francis Yates, unfortunately, doesn't uh, get to. And by the way, the way that I treat my conclusions from Bruno is very, very brain scientific. So the brain in context is a very good book that I'm reading right now. I'm very grateful that uh, it was sent to me by uh, Columbia University, the publishers, if memory serves here. Yes, <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, and I appreciate everybody who sends me books. And I'm really especially grateful for this one because even before I got this, I always do things in a brain scientific way 
to the best of our knowledge. But we can dip into you know all the ancient stuff that we that we want if we're not cross indexing it with the history of brain science. Not all you know not not all of it, but the best stuff that has has survived, and we're using our common sense to be scientific ourselves and not just take science at its word. We're going to have that brain clarity that Kai is talking about. We're going to have that mental focus and clarity because we're going to have common sense and wherewithal to strip out the junk that is itself amongst the sciences because it must be there. That's what the progress is about. It's about weeding out the noise always and being careful of the new noise that is introduced in pursuit of optimization. Optimization that maybe is never coming and is probably undesirable, but the Faust problem, as I like to think of it, causes us to seek it, even though it's so highly undesirable. So a huge part of what the magnetic memory method is about is the memory training itself, but it's also the selective use of the memory training so that it is truly magnetic. What does a magnet do? It attracts and holds in place what you want, but only what you want. And magnets also repel. So it pushes away the stuff that does, isn't needed, that is not magnetic, right? And so that means you're able to focus, you're able to concentrate, you're able to devote yourself to the truth, the things that truly are what you need to get ahead in life, to make it happen. So this is what we're devoted to, and this is what we shall continue to focus on. So I thank everybody for being here today. And get out there, do these three simple brain exercises. I forgot to say hello to David. I'm sorry about that, David. I saw you here somewhere in the chat. These chats just keep moving and moving. I'm not sure where you went to. Oh, there you are, uh, over in this other chat window. <laughs> senior moment again, not exactly, but remember, one of the ways that senior moments can manifest is environmental, tracking things in the environment. But um, I, I, I'm glad you say you're going to review later. Thank you, thank you. I don't know that you're actually here now, but thank you for saying that. And I did notice you were here and wanted to say hello as one of our very wonderful, prized and serious members of this community who is doing amazing things with your memory and can't wait to hear more. All right, so that's it for today's live stream. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks for your thumbs up. Thanks for sharing this around. Thanks for being part of the Magnetic Mary Method community. If you're in the VM, uh, street team for the launch of my new book. Stay tuned because ideally later this week you will have the first audiobook sample. It's quite extensive and uh, you'll be able to download that and listen to it in advance of the launch. So thank you again everybody and until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Oh and uh, do, 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 please use these brain exercises just to show you how fun they are. With all my love to Christian Fitzharris, I give you brain games. Brain games. Brain games. Let the games begin! I define, establish, exercise, and practice. Externalize spatial maps as I attack the path of mature learner. Bottle burner, max memory reserve in earnest. I'm a furnace, an anomaly. Sibling, Sibling of Simonides known to reduce cognitive load. And oh, how I rotate, juggling space, making a case for brain games. So digital amnesia leaves you digital dementia is censured. Did y'all tag uranium on your mind wall? Review, recall, we will evolve. Brain games, synapses flash in my palace, crashing with brain games. Info encoded, mental high roller. Brain games, synapses flash in my palace, crashing with the brain games. Info encoded, mental high roller. This is not a game you can afford to lose. <gasps> Why? Brain games, don't need an app for that I just attack with the path of a lab rat I mean scientist, I'm an annihilist Finalist, illuminist, numinous Doing this, proving this, who is this scholar? Dopamine, fiend, clean, sheen like the Pleiades Enemies, ill at ease, killing with abilities Strolling with affinity, rolling with McKinney Brain games, healthy snacks Build a palace, pick some facts Learn to balance while you rap Unleash talents, don't look back Brain games, synapses flashing my palace crashing with the brain games Info encoded, mental high roll Brain game, synapses flash in my palace, crashing with the brain game. Info encoded, mental high roller. Sky.